like that sign said at Wednesday's game, Lynn is the Knicks' good fortune. <laughs> He's sweet, not sour. <laughs> he turned Kobe into Kobe beef. <laughs> and Kobe's like, hey, I ordered fried chicken. Hey, yo, what's up with that? All right, New York Knicks, Jeremy Lin is so big. Saturday Night Live, as you saw, they opened its show this weekend with a sketch all about him. And sadly, they could not focus on his amazing rise or the 200 points he scored in eight career starts. No, they went after media and fans' blind obsession so far with puns about Lin's name and race. Now, the controversy came to a head after an ESPN editor was fired for writing this headline, which punned on the C word, blanked out there, to describe Lynn's bad habit of turning over the ball. But it's also been other puns like this, like this one you see here in the New York Post, or this one of a fan sign that was seen on air that's turned Lynn's rise into a discussion on race and double standards in the U.S. Joining us here in New York, William Tong, a Democratic state representative in Connecticut, and in Washington, Dr. James Peterson, an associate professor at Lehigh University and blogger for the Huffington Post. Good day to you both, and thank you for spending time with us. Good afternoon. Representative good afternoon. Tong, very good to see both of you. Now, the man fired for writing that headline that I was talking about uh, at ESPN right. uh, tells the New York Daily News, quote this, and I'll read this to you. This had nothing to do with me being cute or punny. I'm so sorry that I offended people. I'm so sorry if I offended Jeremy. So, Representative, do you believe him? I think we've got to be better than that. Uh, you know, this situation is really, it's regrettable, it's unfortunate, um, because this is an amazingly um, inspirational story for all of us in this country. I think when, when all of us are looking for a lift, certainly the New York Knicks were looking for a lift, it, it gives us a spark, not just uh, here in the New York area and in Connecticut, but all, but all across the country, and now all across the world. So, you know, somewhere on the continuum between stupid and malicious uh, is where this headline came from. Obviously, ESPN found there to be something uh, to be concerned about, so they let this guy Within go. Within 36 hours. Yeah, and they let this guy go, and, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I'm happy that ESPN took action. But we need to move on now. Uh, it's an opportunity that reminds us that we've got a lot of work to do, uh, that there isn't uh, a sufficient amount of awareness about Asian Americans, about all communities of color, and what we have to overcome every day. Dr. Peterson, you know that Saturday Night Live sketch that we showed just now, you know, uh, pretty much comes out and says mm -hmm. there's a double standard, some might say, when it comes to cultural stereotypes. Uh, when we think about that, you know, that is if there were to be, for instance, an African-American or Hispanic-American involved in this context, we might have a different sense of, of uproar or, or concern about this. What do you think? Well, when the, when the ESPN person, I heard about him using the C word, I was outraged by that. So I don't know if, if I personally have a double standard. I think mm -hmm. what the SNL skit does extremely well is it shows you the sort of thin line between the punning and the puns and the wordplay and some of the more racialized language that we've seen used to coverage, to cover this. And then, yeah, they try to sort of, outline for us the ways in which we're much more sensitized about issues of race when it comes to black folk. Mm -hmm. I think that's because black folk have been engaged in these battles for such a long time. Mm -hmm. There's such a long tradition in America of black folk organizing around issues of race. And Asian Americans don't have that exact same kind of history. So I don't know if it's a double standard, but it is interesting to point out the distinctions because to be honest with you, in order for us to move forward around issues of race in this country, we can't have blind spots. And so I feel like what's happening around all this covers, right. I love the story of, of Lynn. I love it. That the way in which he's rose to fame really quickly. Mm -hmm. But we're seeing some of the ugly side and the, and the sort of insensitive side about the ways in which we deal with race in this Do country. Doctor, bring up a good point, because it was an association of clergy in Michigan, for instance, who stood up and made the statements out against representative or former representative Hoekstra and his ad with that Asian American woman, the Patty Field. So it is the African American groups yeah. around the country that are very worried. And representative, when we look at that, is why is that? Is it because there's not necessarily the, uh, necessarily the proper leadership in the Asian American American community? Well, I think there are blind spots everywhere, uh, and, and we make a good point here that um, there's not enough attention or focus or awareness. You know, frankly, the history is there. Asian Americans, there was a Chinese American who fought on behalf of the Union in the U.S. Civil War, and we've experienced the Chinese Exclusion Act, uh, certainly. But where's the voice, Japanese internment. It's not, it's not enough. There isn't enough of a voice. That's why I've decided to run for the United States Senate, and that's why I spoke up against 
against, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, Hoekstra's ad in Michigan, because even though it was in Michigan, it was in a top line U.S. Senate race. And someone had to stand up and say, that's wrong. That's offensive. Take it down. Right. You know, last question to you here, doctor. You know, much of the reaction is that there's not a real problem here. Some will say that we're so comfortable with seeing a fortune cookie and Jeremy Lin's face around it that it is just part of the fabric. It's, see, that's, that is the problem, the fact that it goes unmarked. And this is what I mean by a blind spot. The fact that we could have so many of these huge media platforms engaged in what I think is fairly degrading imagery or fairly degrading terminology shows us that we've got a lot of work to do along the issues of race. And again, I would recommend to folk American Born Chinese, which is a great graphic novel that really excavates a lot of the biases that we don't take a look at, that we don't consider around Asian Americans in this country. And Jeremy Lin, who has handled it so far very, very well, I want to thank you very much. He's been exceptionally well. Dr. Peterson, Representative Tong, thank you for your time. Thank you, Richard.